welcome to Seeing Through Glass. I apologise for the wind. Now some of you may remember Dick Lovett, the car dealership from a few videos of mine. Well today they've decided to challenge me to take this BMW i8 from the east coast to the west coast of the UK on one tank of petrol. Ugh. It is disgusting out there. I still find the startup process of this car so bizarre. The car is now on. You just push a button and, and nothing happens, you just get that. Ba-dum! So the challenge that Dick Lovett have given me is to take this car, the i8, from Margate in the southeast of England to Western Supermare in the southwest of England. It is not exactly the world's longest journey. It's not the furthest east to west points, but it's a good barometer of how this car performs on MPG. Dick Lovett have thrown in a few curve rules. Firstly, they said that I cannot use the M25, which is like the ring road around London. I have to go through the centre of London. So traffic is going to be a killer and that will affect the MPG, but that's when I hope to use the electric side of this car. They also say that I have to spend at least 30 minutes in sport mode. At least. But I don't think that's the end of the world. Anyway, as I say, all I want to do right now is get out of this rain and then we can discuss some more. Now this car is terrifyingly clever. So clever that I think it's probably cross that I'm driving it because I'm a bit thick. But it is doing a million things to ensure that not only are you having an efficient drive, but also an enjoyable one. The i8 is a hybrid if you didn't know. And what's really cool is that when you're using the electric, it's a front wheel drive car. And when you're using petrol, it's a rear wheel drive car. So it's like two different cars in one. Also, if you've ever seen any of my videos before, you will know that I'm really not a big fan of like fuel economy challenges. Paul Wallace always tries to make me do them and I just get bored. So, <laughs> not sure how today is gonna go. further context on today's challenge I filled up this morning the petrol engine it cost me 40 pounds to fill up 40 pounds so around 350 miles is the range that I've been getting and I haven't been driving slowly since I picked the car up yesterday so you can definitely eke more out of that but considering that my Jag does 300 miles per tank and cost 75 quid to fill up, I'm already loving <laughs> the hybrid benefits of this car. I have to say, as a cruiser, this car is great. I know it's supposed to be a sports car, but it's got a lot of sort of GT car characteristics. It is a very comfortable seat that I'm in. I'm not sure how it will be once we start going fast because there doesn't seem to be much support but it feels like I'm sat in an amazing armchair so I'm very comfortable right now. The i8 definitely has supercar presence. I'm just not absolutely sure I like the way it looks. There's just something about the back that doesn't quite sit right with me. I think it looks awesome from so many angles, this car, but I really don't like the back end. And I'm an arse guy, so it's kind of important. The interior, however, 
is awesome. And anyone, again, who's watched any of my videos before will know that I'm not a mega fan of BMW interiors, but on this car, they have nailed it. It feels not only futuristic, but it feels special in here. It really feels special in here. We have come to the end of the first motorway section. I'm now down to a dual carriageway, an A road into London. Yeah, I'm not going slowly, by the way. I'm not like, ooh, ooh, I gotta go careful for the petrol. BMW was so confident that I could do this journey that they made up all of these detours and curveballs and they're still like, you'll be fine. So I'm determined basically to make this thing run out of petrol. But when we get into the actual city, I'm gonna go into Eco Pro, which I've never actually been in in this car. I picked it up yesterday, was cruising around London at night in kind of comfort and sport. So Eco Pro, I think, is the one to check out. I don't know what it's gonna do, but it might help eke out our range whilst we're in London. But I might then get bored and just put it back into comfort or sport. <laughs> Right, we are now definitely in London and I reckon it's time to try out this Eco Pro mode. So, oh, everything's gone blue and very quiet. It's a bit eerie. So we're now full electric. Yes, it sounds like a golf buggy. So it says I've got 11 miles of battery range. So I assume Eco Pro, oh there you go, it goes into charge. This car is just too clever for me. In a freaking, it's basically a supercar, this car, in terms of looks. Even though, as I said, I'm debating whether I like the back. From the front, it's amazing. And it's got doors that freaking go up. And then you're running around an emo. <laughs> so, a few observations that London is throwing up. Firstly, the turning circle in the I8, it's not that good. I keep having to do three-point turns when I would never expect to do three-point turns, so I guess that's a weird downside. But secondly, no matter how clever this car is, no matter how economic it is, it cannot take away from the inane boredom of London traffic. I thought we were doing well. Of course I spoke too soon, and here we are yet again, in a traffic jam. London at the minute is unbearable for traffic. I reckon we try and find a shortcut. I just think I'm going to give up in this E-Drive traffic vibes. Let's go sport mode and find a shortcut. <laughs> This is much better, immediately. It's all about shortcuts in sport mode. Oh, it sounds fruity, this little engine. Well, we freaking nailed that. Five minutes in sport mode and a couple of shortcuts. And I'm basically out of London again. I've come out and things seem to be moving because I was getting so frustrated. Where are we at with fuel and economy? We're doing so well. We've got about, looking at the sat nav, 150 miles to go and 200 miles on the range. But we haven't done our full half an hour in sport mode. That was a five minute blip around some back roads. <laughs> is very good on MPG. <laughs> we don't think anyone's surprised by, and let's face it, today we weren't exactly challenging. It's not the world's longest drive. I've got an idea. The guys at Dick Lover were so convinced, and, and right now I am so convinced, that this car will breeze across the country. 
I think we, you and me, should try and make it run out of petrol. <laughs> As in, I think we should do everything we can to see if you push this car really hard, does it start to become like a classic sports car and start eating petrol. So we're on the motorway and I'm going into sport mode. I'm going into sport mode. So we will regenerate the battery, but I'm in theory going to burn through the fuel. Yeah, the new mission is can I make this I-8 run out of petrol? Challenge accepted. I've pulled over to rig up the few cameras because I found a good road to burn some fuel on. And I wanted to just quickly show you what happens in sport mode because it's a very different car. So what you have to do, quite simply, just flick the gear lever to the left. The dials have all gone to red. And basically now we should have the full 340 brake horsepower. So we have the electric engine and the petrol engine giving everything it's got. It's quick! It is quick! Gearbox is the weirdest sounding thing! It does little bars! Bloody dented the fuel. I've still got 140 bloody miles in the range. And my electric battery's now full. Oh. It has been a long old slog of a day. I got up very, very early and there's been lots going on. And I'm still about an hour and a half, I think, away from Western Supermare. I am keen to just get there. So I've come back out of sport mode. I'm going to stop trying to make us run out of petrol and just try to get to Western Supermare as quickly as possible and finish up this challenge. And pretty much the last thing I want right now is exactly what I've got. Back to back, solid traffic for as far as I can see. Oh, that's what I was trying to avoid. I really, I'm not in the mood for traffic. I have to say though, that this i8 cabin is such a nice place to be. I know I touched on it before. And again, why don't you put this kind of interior in the M4 BMW? But it means that sitting in this traffic is more bearable than it could be. But all in all, I'm too tired to have another hour put onto my journey. We have 36 miles to go into Western Supermare and 123 miles on the range. So I'm not running out of petrol anytime soon just enthusiasm to live. Bring me a cappuccino. Unable to connect to any of the paired Bluetooth devices. I can now give you the comprehensive review that the back seats in this car are slightly pointless for adults. We seem to be back on the move! I will keep my fingers crossed, hopefully no one was hurt and hopefully there's no more traffic. I really, really just want to go lie down now. So there we have it, coast to coast. I started my day by the sea and I have finished my day by the sea. As a fuel economy challenge, pretty pointless, but as a way to get to know the IA, pretty awesome. I think three things that I love about this car, um, probably the fact that it's definitely got supercar presence, it's pretty damn futuristic, and it has a nice cabin, which the M4 doesn't. And three things that I probably would change about it is I would redesign the rear end, give it 100 brake horsepower more and make it 15 grand less. Thanks for watching guys, bye.
that's not the sun, is it? Yeah. I can't fish that. <laughs> <laughs>